All right. Uh, get this adjusted here a little bit. Uh, looks like we've got a few people in here. Um, hopefully, the audio's okay on this thing. Um, we'll give it a little bit of time and let a few more people roll in here. Hope that everybody's doing well this morning. Um, Let's see. I see that we got Michigan Jim in here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, starting to get some people rolling in here. Um, so we are approaching the end, <laughs> finally, of uh, this Gettysburg series, uh, which has lasted way longer than I ever anticipated that it would. Uh, my, my original plan, well, as I've mentioned before, my original plan was to never do Gettysburg at all. Uh, and then whenever I decided to tackle it, I thought, well, I'll do maybe 10 or, or 15 episodes. Um, and then the more I got into it, the, the bigger it grew. And then whenever I actually got to Gettysburg, uh, then it just Oh, just got out of hand. <laughs> but anyway, tomorrow is going to be uh, the the very last episode uh, at Gettysburg, and then uh, and then we are going to be moving on. Uh, let's see, Carlin Lanza, great channel, awesome history teacher. Thank you. Looking forward to next year's episodes. Yeah, I got got some pretty cool plans that uh, that we're working on here. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the wonderful series. In addition to all the other work. Thank you. Yeah. I, I've been really, um, pleasantly surprised at, at the reaction, uh, to the, the Gettysburg videos. Um, I, I wanted to do, um, just something different. Um, but, I didn't think I'd have much to offer as it was, but if I did do it, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. And and one of the reactions that that I've got that has has really been rewarding is from a lot of local people uh, in Gettysburg, uh, people who have said, you know, hey, I, I grew up 20 miles from Gettysburg, you know, have been there my whole life, and I didn't even know um, that that this was a thing. Uh, let's see, what's one random civil war fact you can tell me. Ooh, dang. I don't know. Um, off the top of my head. Okay. So I can't, I don't know the number off of the top of my head. I could probably look it up. Um, but, but I read something recently about how the civil war, uh, was like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, how would you phrase it? I, I, the the phrase that I think was used in the book that I read was like a, a, a holocaust for the horse population in the United States. Uh, so obviously we you know talk about the the combat casualties, uh, and then on a secondary level talk about how it affected the civilians. Uh, there, there's a book that came out recently. And I can't remember the name of it, but I want to get it. Um, I think it's on my Amazon wish list. Um, that, that talks about the, the environmental effects of, of the civil war. Um, so, so that really interests me. Um, and whenever I read that stat about how, I think it was like two thirds, I, I, I don't hold me to this, but I think like two thirds of the horses in the United States were killed in the civil war, just something completely unbelievable. Um, let's see, got comments rolling through pretty fast here. So if I, if I miss a question or something, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, the Sun by Peter Hart is an excellent book. Oh, somebody can see my see my books here behind me. And yes, the the Sun by Peter Hart is is an outstanding book. Uh, let's see, Lisa Loftus. Good morning, morning. Good seeing everybody. Uh, pretty soon you will have a star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood. Doubt it. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh yeah, somebody said something about a camel being used in in the Corinth campaign. Uh, I saw that, and that I think they ended up killing the camel and eating it. Maybe I can't remember, uh, but but there's like a there's a marker down there somewhere for 
uh, for that camel, or maybe it got killed during the battle or something. I can't remember. Uh, see, my wife was not a history buff till she found your channel 30 miles from Gettysburg. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that, that's another thing that, uh, some feedback that I've received that, uh, has really been encouraging to me is people saying that, you know, they're not really into history or they know somebody who wasn't really into history, but the, the videos, uh, have helped them to kind of spur an interest. So, um, yeah, that's that's really cool. What what I found, you know, uh, with a lot of people, is that, you know, they find out that I'm into history or have a YouTube channel that's based on history or something like that, and they'll talk about, oh man, I, you know, was never a huge fan of history. And and if you talk to them long enough, you can usually figure out that it's not that people don't like history; they don't like the way that they were taught history. Uh, there, there has been a lot of damage done to people in their history classrooms. Um, but history is interesting. I mean, Hollywood wouldn't make historical based movies if there wasn't some human interest story, if there wasn't some entertainment value uh, in, in some way. So, yeah, that's that's cool uh, that, that your wife is is getting into uh, getting into history. Um, let's see. Thank you for the great channel. Thank you. I appreciate everybody watching. Um, see sad to see this series ending enjoyed your travel through gettysburg waiting for the next adventure yeah i was i, I didn't want to do uh, i was afraid to do a series on gettysburg to begin with and now i'm afraid uh when it ends people are going to be like well heck with this uh but hopefully hopefully the stuff that we have coming up will will be of interest uh in in some way so i'm looking over here kind of reading the comments here uh as it goes by Let's see next month will be the fifth time in gettysburg whoa it's going too fast for me um, it was great places to go. We haven't been yet. Oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I received an email from, uh, Miss Nancy at, uh, the, the Shriver house there on, on Baltimore street. Um, just basically, uh, you know, she was very appreciative of the, the video and, I don't know how many views that thing has got, but it, it that one really caught fire and and did well. And she said that there's been a lot of traffic, um, you know, of people coming into uh, the Shriver House as a result of uh, you know having seen that video, which is which is great. Uh, you know, that's that's very rewarding uh, for me. Um, that's part of the reason you know why I had the channel is just kind of give like a little bit of an appetizer, and then uh, you know if you can. Well, then go there and check it out yourself. And if you can't, well, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you can kind of experience the the place through my eyes. Gettysburg Museum of History is another one um, who, you know, has expressed that there's been a lot of people come through there as a result of seeing those videos. Uh, let's see. Band of Brothers, 291,000 views. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, if people are getting into history and if they're learning something, um, I'm all about it. Um. So I'm, I'm trying to read all the comments. It, whatever I don't get to, I'll I'll go back to and and read later. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing. As the channel has grown, it's become increasingly difficult for me to respond to all of the the comments that are left on videos. But but do know that I, I read them all, uh, including the the guy who for like the past I think ten Gettysburg videos has jumped on to complain about them. Uh, one of them, he said, uh, you know, this has turned into like the Gettysburg channel. And then in like the next video, he said, I have unsubscribed. Uh, if you ever leave Gettysburg, I'll consider subscribing again. And then I, I posted the video the other day on the Gettysburg address. And uh, I think he he posted, it's the same guy, uh, jumped on there and he said, enough Gettysburg, <laughs> which I don't know, is hilarious, but uh, you know. So anyway, if, if you happen to be watching, uh, there, there is hope. The, the Gettysburg series will end tomorrow and uh, you can have peace again. Um, let's see. Somebody putting my plug in for future travels to Cold War sites. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, history Savior 1941. It's just nice to get people who are not interested in history engage. Sparks an interest. Nice to see new people interested. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Going to do a little bit of collaboration with uh, History Savior 1941 here. Just got to get the got to get the timing worked out. Um, whoa, stuff is moving fast. I'm sorry. Um, somebody says, "Love your channel. Have you considered teaching history in school?" Yeah, I've I've given it some thought. 
Uh, favorite channel on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, what is your favorite battle site or spot at Gettysburg? Uh, the wheat field. The, I, I, and I don't know why. There, there's something about the wheat field that is just magnetic to me. Uh, I know a lot of people are attracted to uh, Little Round Top or, you know, um, the high water mark at, at Pickett's Charge. There's something about that wheat field story that it, it, it's just like this this vortex that that pulls both sides in, and um, yeah, it, I I don't know why I, I want to learn more about it. Uh, let's see, any chance of you going to Elmira, location of Union Prison Camp, known as Hellmira? Yeah, if you go to my Andersonville video. Uh, there's about 1,840 comments <laughs> from people asking about uh, Elmira. Uh, the The problem with Elmira is it's just so far from me. Uh, it's it's not in a place that I happen to go through, but I, I do want to go there someday. Uh, a, a lot of people saw that Andersonville video and thought that I was being really biased or really one sided, um, you know, and that I didn't talk about the Confederate. Uh, prisoner of war camps in in the north. Well, that's because I was at Andersonville. So, so whenever I'm at a place, I, I'm not going to, you know, if I go to Normandy, I'm not going to talk about what happened to Iwo Jima. Uh, I'm not going to ha talk about what happened at the, the Battle of the Bulge. I'm, I'm going to talk about what happened there at Normandy. Um, so I, I did go to one of the Confederate camps in Alton, Illinois. And, um, you know, because I, I want to I, I want to see all sides. Uh, I, I want to learn about all things, but I, a lot of people gigged me on that Andersonville video um, because they they thought that I was I don't know, not being fair. Uh, Kyle, hey, thanks for the super chat. Been proudly wearing my history traveler shirt. Any news on the website? Thank you for what you do. Ah, thank you. Yeah, happen to have the uh, know your history shirt on uh, right now, which uh, might be relevant now more than ever. My gosh. Uh, if you look at some of the stuff that's going on in Afghanistan, it's just heartbreaking. Um, and it's history, history rhyming. Uh, excuse me. But as far as the, the website, um, man, I have just been swamped lately. And the guy who uh, has been working on the website, it's, it's pretty much done. Uh, the only thing that it's lacking is information from me. Uh, I, I've just got to get some stuff typed up and sent to him and some, a few pictures and it'll be done. Uh, really, it's it's my fault. Um, but yeah, I, I hope to have that done sooner rather than later. Uh, History Savior, thank you for Super Chat for the museum fund. Hope your dream becomes a reality. Yeah, that's... Uh, and Scott, thank you for the Super Chat as well. Um, yeah, that is one of my long-term goals uh, is to establish my own museum. Uh, so you all have seen that, you know, recently established a partnership with the Gettysburg Museum of History, uh, which is run by Eric Dorr, incredible guy. Uh, if you want to support the channel, in addition to Patreon and, you know, picking up a t-shirt, go, go support the Gettysburg Museum of History because uh, they're, they're supporting the channel and um, we have some exciting things that we're doing. As a matter of fact, if I wish that I could do like a, a screen share here, I would just go to the website. Uh, I brought something along with me that I picked up from their web store. So you can get like artifacts uh, and things like that. Well, here is an Iron Cross second class that I got from the Gettysburg Museum of History. And it was really cool. Uh, the other day, I, I showed this to an individual. and. Um, they, they held it in their hand and they were like, wow, uh, you know, you, you see about, you know, stuff with the Nazis in the movies or in video games or whatever. He said, but this, this really makes it real. And I was like, awesome that you, you got it. Uh, you, you understand, uh, you know, the, the artifacts and stuff like that, it, it takes the history and, and brings a sense of, of realism to it. Uh, so on, on the website there, they have tons of, different artifacts, stuff from the Civil War. Uh, I think I made a post a few days ago about how they have a, a Civil War bullet pack. I, I think it's $35. So it's very affordable. It has a little guide in there about, you know, Civil War bullets. Well, you can get that 
And then with, you know, people who are friends or people who are, um, you know, friends of your kids or your grandkids or, your, you know, whatever, uh, you can pull that out and show them. And, and people dig that kind of stuff. You know, they're, they're really into that. And if they can hold some artifact in their hand. Uh, so anyway, all that to say this, definitely go to their website and, and check it out. They also have a foundation. Uh, it's a nonprofit, so you can make a tax deductible donation there. And they're going to be, they're looking to expand their museum. Um, so one of the reasons that I'm really excited to be partnered up with uh, Gettysburg Museum of History is that there are hundreds of thousands of people that come to Gettysburg every year. Um, and that makes it an ideal location for, for people to come in and learn all kinds of history, not just Civil War history. Uh, I mean, you can see from the videos, the, that museum is is insane. Um, but anyway, I, I text back and forth with Eric, you know, almost every day now. And uh, we've got we've got some big plans. Um, and and I, I can't give the, the full details. Um, but one of the things that we're looking at doing if it if it pans out, it will surpass anything I've ever done or anything that I will ever do on this channel. Uh, it's it's going to be something special. But enough about that. Uh, Steve Helms, thanks for the super chat. It says uh, thanks for the channel. Next request: a whole series on Little Round Top and Normandy Battle Saint Lo. Mm, funny that you mentioned Normandy. We've got some plans uh, in the works right now. Uh, I'm I'm going to get back to Normandy and. Uh, I'm going to link up with Paul Woodage from World War II TV, and uh, I'm going to do a better job than than what I did the, the first time around. We're, we're really going to uh, hopefully do do Normandy properly, uh, which is what I mean by that is two things. One is not just focusing heavily on the American contribution, uh, like what I did in the first video. I'm an American, so naturally that's, that's where I'm going to drift. Um, but I, I really want to focus on uh, the British and Canadian contributions as well. There are some amazing stories that come off of Sword Gold and Juno Beach that, that I just didn't have the time to get to the, the first time that I went. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, we want to get inland. We want to get off of the beach and start telling those stories. A lot of people focus on D-Day on June 6th, uh, but the Battle of Normandy didn't end uh, you know, at the end of the day. There, there was a lot that happened there. Okay, um, so uh, again, I apologize that I'm, I'm missing so many comments here. Somebody's saying that they've been to Dachau, and it hits hard. Yeah, I took a group of students to Dachau, um, and yeah, it was a very, very moving experience. Um, will you be doing an Antietam series? Yes, at some point. Uh, looking to link up with a um, um, couple different organizations, one of them being the American Battlefield Trust, um, you know, Gary and I have talked, uh, about, about doing some stuff at, at Antietam. Um, and then I had, uh, another organization reach out recently, um, you know, asking about doing some Antietam stuff. So yeah, I, I, I've never been there. So, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. Uh, let's see, turning in from Richmond, Virginia, I love the channel. Okay. Thank you. I, I need to get back to Richmond. Um, I've I've been there before, but not not nearly long enough. My great uncle was in the 506 and was killed in France. Wow. Yeah, those guys were something else. Uh, Scott Lever, <laughs> with possibly the most asked question, uh, which is tell us what your tattoo says. So that's this one right here. Uh, you can see it's in Cyrillic, or Russian. Uh, and that's the Russian word Usanovlin, which means adopted. Um, so where where that comes from, uh, it, it pulls from a verse out of uh, Galatians 4 in the Bible. Um, just in summary, um, talks about how all of us are spiritual outsiders and God adopts us into his family. Uh, so that's that's the reason that I got that. And and the reason for the the Cyrillic is as I have some pretty deep ties to uh, to Eastern Europe, so there's there's a dual meaning there. Yeah. 
let's see, Chip Schaefer, anything on the American Revolution? That is a huge gap on my channel that needs to be filled. Uh, I am I am definitely going to hit some American Revolution sites uh, at, at some point. Um, Chris from from vlogging through history has done some some civil or Revolutionary War stuff. Um, so I that has had to kind of tide me over until I can get to it myself. Of course, Matt, the American Battlefield Trust has some Revolutionary War stuff, um, but but that's that's a uh, a gap on my channel that I really need to fill. Hopefully we'll get to it sometime this fall or maybe in the winter. Um, but man, now more than ever, uh, we, we need a, a good, robust uh, history education um, as far as our, our country's founding. Uh, let's see, watching from Sarah. Okay. Yeah. I just answered the revolution question. Um, let's see. There's a lot. More to the tale of Brian's barn at Gettysburg. Let me know if you want to share. Yeah, I'm always interested in learning more. It's one thing I love about the channel is it's such a great opportunity for, for me to learn. Like I'll post a video and then, you know, I'll get comments or private messages or emails, people saying, hey, I didn't know if you knew this, but, and then they'll tell me, you know, something that I didn't know. So it's been a great opportunity for me to learn. And then I get frustrated that I didn't know that before I made the video. It gives me a good excuse to go back. Uh, have you been to Port Hudson Civil War Battlefield? I have not. Haven't been there. Uh, Mount Vernon. I have three videos on Mount Vernon. So if you go back, um, I forget what the number of the episodes are. Uh, maybe somebody can look it up for me here. Um, yeah, I, I did three episodes at Mount Vernon. Um, great place. Loved it there. Got a lot of hate on <laughs> that first Mount Vernon video. Um, you know, I, I, I've been a little bit shocked at the, uh, level of, um, anger, I guess you could say that people harbor for George Washington, which ties into him being a slave owner. Um, and then in that second video, I, I, you know, I want to tell the whole story on, on any place or any figure. So I, uh, we talked about, um, the enslaved population that, that lived there at Mount Vernon. And uh, at the end of that video, I try to make it clear that I don't support slavery and that I find it morally repugnant and that it was always wrong. Um, but I, I talked about how it's admirable in a way that we see an evolution in George Washington's attitude towards slavery throughout his lifetime. So he's born into this system that it's he he knows nothing different his whole life like having slaves is the norm um that's that's what's right towards the end of his life though we we see some changes um now would it have been awesome by our current standards if he would have just been completely enlightened and would have freed all of his slaves immediately yeah that, that would have been great um but you know i try and have a little bit of grace for uh, people of the past. And uh, yeah, not everybody shares that um, sentiment. <laughs> so yeah, I had a lot of people gigging me, calling me a um, supporter of slavery and yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, anyway, let's see. Uh, again, I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff here, so, so I, I apologize. Um, Steve Helms, thanks for the super chat there. Plans for 1812, plans for the Alamo, uh, asks a fellow tattooed Christ follower. Awesome. Um, yes. So I've, let's see, I did one video that tied in with the War of 1812. Oh, dear heavens, this is terrible. I forgot the name of the fort. Uh, it was up in Maine. So if you go back into that series, um, where, where I went to Maine, I, I went to a fort that, that had some ties to the War of 1812. Uh, and also some of the um, forts that I went to um, in that area had ties to 1812. Nothing uh, nothing like what I should. But anyway, uh, yes, I, I do want to hit that um, because it's, it's important. Uh, and then the Alamo. I, I've never been to the Alamo, so I definitely want to go see that as well. Um, let's see. Let's see the machine radio show. I've been called worse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so have I. Uh, let's see. You need to come to the Pittsburgh area. Whiskey Rebellion, Washington Crossing. Yeah, I, I definitely want to get out there. Uh, let's see. You're going to put up the picks for the Curahy participants. I sent you a bunch. Yeah, that's a that's another failure on my part. Is I, I just get I just get so swamped that one thought pushes out another, and um, yeah, I it's it's just awful. Um, as a matter of fact, I heard from Sam the other day, and this is terrible, but I still need to get back in contact with him uh, where they're looking at doing another cleanup effort probably in November. Uh, so I might kind of save some of that stuff and keep it in my hip pocket and then use that to, to try and get some more people down there and, and maybe raise some more funds. They're wanting to get a sand blaster because that was so effective for us uh, at, at Curahee at getting – uh, a lot of that graffiti off of the rock. Uh, so they're wanting to get kind of a smaller sandblaster that they can go and hit some of those sites and keep it, keep it clean. Uh, I think it's going to be a couple thousand dollars for that though. Um, let's see. Don't worry about angry people. Just pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't get too spun up about negative comments or negative people. I kind of view them in the same way that I view a Rubik's cube. They're, they're interesting to me. I want to kind of figure out, uh, Figure them out. Have you ever thought about doing a series on the Oregon Trail, Survivors of the Donner Party? Whoop, it left. Um, also love that you aren't afraid about being a Christian man and your faith in Christ. Ah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, I, I have thought about doing that. Um, I've thought about an Oregon Trail series. I've thought about an old Highway 66 series. Um, yeah, doing something on the Donner Party would be interesting. I, I need to get out to the West Coast. Uh, that's, that's a neglected area out there. Um, as far as stuff on my channel and yeah, as far as my faith, uh, yeah, that's deeply tied into who I am. So it's, uh, I, I can't separate that from anything that I do. Uh, but for people who, you know, that's not your thing. That's, um, uh, yeah, I, I won't mention the person's name, but there's a, an individual on, on YouTube that, that I know well, um, that is, atheist agnostic and we get along great we have some great conversations and uh he, he's been very helpful to me uh you know with with my own beliefs um you know just through the conversations we've had so just because we disagree doesn't mean that we have to hate each other uh should do a series on the texas revolution i completely agree i need to get to texas i've got some friends down there too um matthew thanks for the super chat keep up the good work i appreciate that Appreciate that. And Kirk, thank you. Kirk 189. Wow. Thanks for that super chat as well. Um, Alexander, when are you going to get a new cat? <laughs> never, never. Look at this. Look at, look at how well it fits my head. How, how could I, how could I, um, how could I get a new hat whenever, whenever this one seems to be just made for me? It's like asking me when I'm going to get a new wife or when am I going to get new kids? We're, we're made for each other. Um, let's see. How about a series on the old West Deadwood tombstone? Okay. So Vicky, if you'll go back, gosh, dang, I, I, I wish I had, if you, if you'll go back and maybe, um, on YouTube type in history traveler Deadwood, I, I did do some, some stuff at Deadwood, uh, tombstone. That is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's not exactly historically accurate. Uh, but I want to go to tombstone just because of that. It's just so stinking far away. Um, Ellen Wilds, thank you for the super chat. Historians should support one another. Scott, thank you as well. Wow. Appreciate you guys. Um, <laughs> the machine radio show. Sorry, boss. I'm broke. Small donation. Tired of making contact with the museum or tried. I'm sorry. Tried making contact with the museum for their world war II collection. Have some personal photos. I will copy for them. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you're talking about the Gettysburg Museum of History. He's super swamped. Like he he has a, a lot of uh, people emailing him and and stuff like that. Um, so just yeah, try again. Yeah, but but thank you. Uh, you know whether it, it you know on on the Patreon I have one slot that's a dollar a month, and and I, I value that as much as I do the people who contribute. 15 or $25 a month. Uh, let's see. Steve White, are you going to the Battlefield Walk in November? 
with Gary and Tim. Dang, I wish that I could. I would, I would love to do that. Whenever I saw that uh, Gary Edelman and, and Tim Smith were, were doing that battlefield walk, uh, I was really wishing that I was going to, to be out in that part of the country at that time. Uh, Kenneth New, thank you. Uh, good morning. Are you going to touch on any World War I history? I have some maps I would like to pass along to you. Wow. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. So World War I is another one that I want to do. And I, I, whenever I was in France, I tried to do some World War I stuff. But um, I've, I've told the story before um, where I went to Verdun. And it just didn't work out. Um, for some reason, the credit card merchant in that area didn't accept my card and I couldn't get a hotel. I couldn't get fuel. I mean, we, we were just floundering and we got there later at night. Everything was closed. Gas stations were closed. Restaurants were closed. Hotels were closed and it broke my heart, but we ended up just having to, to move on. Ended up going to, to Reams um, and um, yeah, did, did a, a video there. Uh, but yeah, if you have some maps that you'd like to pass along, oh man, I would appreciate that. Uh, shoot me an email at the history underground channel at gmail.com and I can get you a PO box uh, where you can send some of that stuff. I've been so grateful at some of the people who have sent me historic artifacts. Uh, I use them for teaching tools, uh, use them, um, you know, for, for the future museum, um, so yeah, that, that is that is much appreciated. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go back and watch videos I missed before I was a fan. Okay, awesome. Hope that you hope that you enjoy them. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody sent me a photo of Patton's funeral on Instagram. I must have missed that, so I apologize. I uh, love the collaborations with Gary Edelman. He's an amazing wealth of information. That is absolutely true. Uh, Gary Edelman is, uh, <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's amazing to sit there and just watch him kind of riff on uh, the Civil War and on the Gettysburg and stuff like that. Just, just uh, like you said, an incredible wealth of knowledge. Um, he, he would probably embarrass, be embarrassed to hear me say something like this, but uh, I think that Gary Edelman is kind of carrying the mantle uh, the, the Ed bears left. Um, so yeah, he, he's doing, he's doing an amazing work, uh, with the American battlefield trust. Love what they're doing. Um, let's see if you ever make it out to the West coast, visit Sutter's fort and the railroad museum. Awesome. That I will, excuse me. Um, world war one work with the first infantry division museum at Contigny park in Wheaton, Illinois. Yes. I want to go to that museum really bad. Uh, I've heard a lot of a lot of good things. Um, I know that John McManus and his book, The Dead and Those About to Die, uh, he, he did a lot of work with that museum. So, yeah, I want to get back up there. Uh, let's see. Working on a documentary on a bomb factory active during World War II. I have another prominent historian and friend on board. Need help? Would you be game? Ah, sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe shoot me an email. Um, a lot of it would depend on just when and where would be the, the biggest factors. But yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, uh, let's see. I've enjoyed and appreciated series on Gettysburg. Any more plans for Civil War battlefields? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I hit a few places um, this summer. So after this Gettysburg series wraps... Um, there are some coastal forts down in Alabama that I went to that were really interesting. Um, I went to Shiloh. I didn't film there. Uh, I, I just went for myself. It was on family vacation and, uh, there's nothing more painful than sitting there watching me try and <laughs> film content for, uh, an episode or a series. And whenever I go to Shiloh, like I want to spend a lot of time there and, and do kind of like a Shiloh and Corinth series. So really, um, my 
intention there was was just to learn a little bit more about the battle, uh, which I'm glad that I did because it, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, but yes, short answer to the question. Um, definitely going to be doing some more uh, some more Civil War battlefield stuff in the future. Also looking at doing, we've mentioned Gary Edelman several times. Uh, Gary and I are looking at linking up again December um, and, and hitting a few spots. So uh, what do you think of Matt from the NPS in Gettysburg? Yeah, he's, I, I don't know him personally. I've never met him. Uh, I've just seen his stuff, you know, on YouTube and I, I think he's great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. KB History Quest. Thank you for the super chat there. Appreciate that. All right. Pardon me for a second. Going to take a quick swig here. Oh, Lisa, can you show the photo behind you? Yeah, there it is. Just showing the evolution of the American soldier. So showing, um, you know, from the Revolutionary War all the way up until Iraq and Afghanistan, looking at different uniforms and, and things like that. I find gear interesting. So anything on New Market Battlefield? I don't have anything there, um, but would would love to do it. Uh, let's see. Alec asks, love the episodes where you stop at good little restaurants. Yeah. Yeah, like the B29 Cafe down in Ozark, Missouri. Uh, that that has been that has been one of my favorites. And there's several great places in Gettysburg too. Gettysburger, one of my favorites. Um, let's see, you're going to do a video on the Lincoln County War. That that would be cool. Um, a lot of it would depend on if I can find like something to film. Uh, so so with the History Traveler series, that's one thing that was a little bit of a challenge is, I don't know, maybe it's, this is just my own limitations, but in order to tell a story, I like need a place uh, where I can kind of do a, a show and tell. Um, but like if there's a battle that just took place out on a pancake flat field, uh, it's a little bit hard. I, I can maybe do like a shorter video on it. Um, but yeah, if there, if there are any places that you can suggest that I go to, I, I would definitely like to check that out. I want to do some more Old West stuff. Um, let's see. My great-great-grandfather was one of the Battery Wagner defenders. Oh, wow. Very cool. Uh, greetings from Massachusetts. Haven't been back to Gettysburg since the 70s. Need to get back. Thanks for the Andersonville video. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, here's another question. Have you been to Dragon Man's Museum in Colorado? Um, I have not, I've watched Dragon Man's, some of his videos and I've had several people ask me about going to his museum out in Colorado, I actually reached out to them, uh, via email a while back, but never got a response, which is understandable. Um, uh, there are several emails in my inbox right now that haven't been responded to. So people get busy and, um, Yeah. Let's see. I can see you doing the 72 ounce steak challenge in Texas. I've actually been to that place. I didn't do the 72 ounce steak challenge. I think I just had a ribeye and some rattlesnake. Uh, but I had some friends that tried it and they failed miserably. And one of them ended up vomiting in the parking lot. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, what's it called? Is it the big Texan? I think that's what the name of the restaurant is in Amarillo. Cool place. Uh, please go to Fort Macon. It was used in civil war, Spanish American war, world war II. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Uh, somebody asking about Pea Ridge. Yeah, definitely going to, to check that out at some point. Uh, NASA Space Museum in Titusville. I'll have to check that out as well. Uh, somebody asking, what are you doing next? Uh, so I mentioned that I spent some time in, uh, in L.A., which uh, not the L.A. you're thinking of, not Los Angeles, L.A., as in lower Alabama. I uh, spent some time down there. And um, hit some coastal forts. Uh, also went to the USS Alabama, which was dang cool. Uh, and I actually need to get back down there um, because I was going to hit some places um, with the YouTube channel History Savior 1941. And it rained on us. And rain and camera equipment do not go well together. So, so I have to get back down there and, and pick up a few things. But that'll be coming in the near future. And then I spent some time in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, in that area. Um, 
so yeah. And then I'm also working on a, a trip back to Normandy. Uh, let us know if you head to the cow town of Abilene, also Eisenhower's hometown. Yep, I want to get out there because I'm, I'm trying to hit like all of the presidential uh, grave sites. Um, so that actually I have two that are coming up within the next couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get out to, to Eisenhower's place. Um, that's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite historical figures. Uh, check out the World War II Museum in Louisiana. I've been there before. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, do you work another full-time job or is this your full-time gig? Uh, I have like three full-time jobs. <laughs> this is one of them. Um, let's see. Somebody, Vicki Stevens. I had a phobia of snakes and cringe when I see the beware of rattlesnake signs in your battlefield tour videos. Yeah. Devil of a Whipping is a great book about cow pen 1781. Mm, I'll check that out. Uh, Green Mountain Boys, that'd be a fun one to do. Um, Sonny Tracy Witt, thank you for the super chat. Would love to see you cover Fort Tecumseh and other Indian forts. Yeah, I, I would I would love to hit some of that stuff. Uh, Kieran Ball, I think, is it Kieran? I think I mispronounced that correctly. Uh, how long have you been interested in history? Honestly, that, that has been a lifelong thing. Um, you know, my, my grandpa, uh, used to tell my brother and I all kinds of stories about, you know, the great depression and his service in the Korean war. And then my grandpa on my other side would talk about, you know, world war two and things like that. And, and I honestly can't remember a time whenever I wasn't interested in history in, in some form or fashion. Uh, let's see. Ever get to go on the battlefield tower before it was imploded? No, that, that, uh, that existed before my time, um, you know, in, in Gettysburg. And now I've basically become a resident oh, and there is this daggum fly that keeps terrorizing me. And if I could murder that thing, I would. Um, all right. Anyway. Let's see, Gary Ackerson, and for, hello from New Jersey. Great grandfather fought at Gettysburg. New Jersey Cav family says his horse was killed. Nurse up at home later reading list. Okay, yeah, wow, yeah, I love listening to all of these, uh, you know, family stories uh, from from these battles uh, and some of these individual accounts. I mentioned Chris uh, from vlogging through history the other day uh, on his. Uh, Facebook page. I don't know if it went up on his YouTube channel, but he was kind of following in uh, one of his ancestors' footsteps, and he he read a letter, and I, I'm not sure if the letter was written by his ancestor or not, but uh, it was it was pretty cool to to listen to that, excuse me, that that firsthand account uh, from somebody who was there. Um, let's see, we've got a few people saying that they they loved the um, Gettysburg series. Yeah, appreciate that. Let's see. Sean Underwood. Hello from the UK. My brother is uh, in the UK right now. Yeah, he um, is, started out. I think he started up in Scotland and then came down to London and is dodging over to, to Ireland. Uh, anyway, found you about eight months ago. Never stopped watching since. Keep up the amazing work. Love everything you do. Uh, thank you for all the hard work. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, and here that sometime early to mid-September, we'll be starting the new series, uh, American Artifact, with uh, Eric Dorr at the Gettysburg Museum of History. So there's going to be all kinds of content rolling out, and I'm never going to be able to go to sleep again. Uh, it's going to be like a 24-hour work cycle, but it, it's worth it. Uh, if, I can, if I can do some good, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep cranking them out if, as much as I can. Um. Let's see. My family story is not the greatest. I have to be reminded that we are not them. Yeah, you know what? I I hear all kinds of people say say things like that. Uh, really, one thing that you re realize whenever you study history is is that people are awful. Uh, the, it's it's something that is just born in us. I, I come from the school of thought that that people 
by nature are are evil. Uh, now, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I don't want to get too deep into that. Uh, but I'll I'll use an example here to to kind of support or illustrate that point. Now, I think there are degrees to evil, um, but but think about a a child, innocent child. Let's say um, they they grow up in like the best family ever, and they have the the greatest care and uh, nurturing, and you know all, all all the things that that a kid needs. Um, do you have to teach that kid to be bad or do you have to teach that kid uh, to be good? You, you have to teach them to be good because they're, they're by nature bad, just, just like all of us. Um, that's why we have character education and things like that in, in school. Um, so whenever you're talking about, you know, your ancestors, yeah. Uh, you look at people like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln. I mean, there's a lot of people that hate Abraham Lincoln. Um, but when you, when you realize that all people are flawed, well, it gives you a, a little bit more, more grace. So anyway, uh, I missed a super chat. GW Nusi. I think I got that right. Hopefully. Uh, why is Teddy Roosevelt your favorite president? <laughs> awesome. So Teddy Roosevelt is the man. Uh, and he is the man for several reasons. One, I like his, I like his approach to life. Uh, just this go get them attitude, take no prisoners. Uh, you know, as a, a child, he had asthma and rather than that being something that, that held him back, uh, or was a crutch for him, um, like his dad gave him some weights and said, here, here we're just going to outwork this. Um, and, and he did. Uh, I love that. He, he was into jujitsu, which, uh, I am as well, except for, I've been out for a couple of weeks because I had a knee injury. Um, I'm also an outdoorsman. Um, so I hunt fish, you know, all of that stuff. Love the outdoors. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, same way was an outdoorsman and, and was a, a conservationist. Uh, was Teddy Roosevelt perfect? Well, we just got done talking about how nobody's perfect and everybody has flaws. Um, but anyway, uh, so so yeah, he he is a flawed individual, and and there are some viewpoints that he had in life that I wouldn't agree with. But I think if you put Teddy Roosevelt, if you weigh the the good and the bad on the scales, yeah, he's one of the coolest people who ever lived. Uh, let's see if you consider doing Monticello or visiting Monticello and doing a video on Thomas Jefferson, interesting and wise man. I I've been to Monticello. Gosh, it's probably been 20 years ago. Um, uh, maybe not that long, maybe 15, 15, 20 years ago. And, and yes, I would like to go to Monticello. Whew, I'll tell you what, if people, <laughs> if people poured out the hate for, uh, the George Washington videos, uh, I can only imagine what, uh, what I would get for my treatment of Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely want to go there. That would also, well, I guess technically I've already been to his grave, but but not on the channel. So I'd be able to check off that box. Uh, Steve Helms, Israel, history traveler, walking in the steps of Jesus. Boom. That would be amazing. That is a goal. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely want to go to Israel. Another one that I've looked at is Greece. So if you look at my channel, you would think that the only thing that I'm interested in is the Civil War and World War II. Um, at, at some point, we are going to branch out because, man, history is you know, expansive. Um, and, and I want to I want to hit some ancient sites. Now, people might jump ship and abandon the channel after that. And they might say, well, heck with this guy. I uh, liked it whenever he was doing World War II and Civil War. Um, but but yeah, I, I want to hit some ancient history as well, mainly because it's stuff that I want to learn about. Uh, I want to be a, a more well-rounded person. If you look at my brother and I, uh, like my brother is really into the ancient history and uh, the, the dude is like a walking encyclopedia, you know, can tell you all kinds of interesting things. Uh, and, and he's also a little bit more into like British history. Me, I'm more into American history, um, especially civil war to present day. Um, yeah. So, but, but I, I want to get to some, some more, um, ancient history sites. 
Uh, let's see. How about Fredericksburg, Virginia? Yeah, definitely want to get to Fredericksburg as well. Uh, have you ever read Washington's Farewell? Yep. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Rome would be awesome to explore. I've been to Rome, and oh, yeah, it is cool as heck. Uh, I need to go to Teddy Roosevelt's home in Oyster Bay. Yeah. Oh, man, I I, I really, really want to go there. Um, just haven't just haven't made it yet. Uh, one, one of the big things that kind of kept me uh, from going there in this past year was, of course, all of the travel restrictions and things being shut down. So, um, but yeah, Oyster Bay is high on the list. Uh, definitely want to go, go see Teddy Roosevelt's house. Um, okay. Recent the patent photo. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a look at that. Um, woke people hate history, constantly striving to rewrite it. <sighs> I feel like I'm getting ready to walk into a minefield now. Um, a lot of some of the, how do I phrase this? Some of the issues that, that we're seeing in people's approach to history uh, has to do with the way it's being taught. I, go go to Google uh, whenever we're done with this whole thing and uh, type in, I think you can type in like Utah teacher fired. Uh, there, there was recently a teacher in Utah who lost her job. And I'm not a huge fan of people losing their jobs, but in this case, I think it was the right call. Um, this it was a chemistry teacher, I think. Uh, this lady goes off on a tirade uh, with her students um, and, and really um, uses her position as an educator in a very um, abusive manner. Uh, now, the the ideology that, that she was really pushing uh, was a, a leftist ideology. Um, but to, to be fair, if if some some right wing instructor was up there saying the same things in the same manner that that she was, I would I would speak out against that as well. Um, there there is definitely a push in high school history education um, for teachers to use their position. Um, I was getting ready to say as a position of influence. Um, but, but to use it as a platform to push a political ideology. And I think that's wrong, no matter what left, right, whatever. Uh, so I, I think that the, the responsible approach, um, for any high school educator and really a college educator is, is to present everything. So if, if you say, okay, so here is what, I don't know. Let, let's just take the Civil War, for example, because that that might be an easy um, an easy example. Um, say, OK, here, here are the the positions on slavery. Uh, this is what the abolitionist view was. Now, if you would have been a slaveholder in the South, how might you have defended slavery? Why would you have thought that that's right? So, so you start looking at, at both viewpoints and then weighing out. OK, what now? What do you think? Um, now there there are some things that are clearly wrong, you know, slavery, um, some of the you know Marxism and uh, Nazism, and you know things that that resulted in the death of millions of people, where we can say with absolute certainty that that was awful. Um, but we need to dig into the human nature element and see why people believe those things. Um, see, a high school principal in Florida told a parent the Holocaust did not happen. Yeah, see, that's, and I, I've run into that myself. Um, there, there are some, some crazy things uh, out there. But uh, I, I think that we need to teach students how to think, not what to think. And I think if you teach history properly, as it says, you know, I'm robbing some words from the Declaration of Independence here, it's, it's self-evident. The, the what's right and what's wrong is, is self-evident, um, you know, and 
I've encountered people who have had some pretty crazy ideas. Um, and the solution to winning an argument has never been to shout them down or to try and overcome them by force. The solution, the, the remedy for bad ideas is good ideas. The remedy for bad speech is good speech. Um, that, that has been my, my own personal experience. So anyway, um, teachers do not have it easy today. They absolutely do not. Yeah. Very, very tough job right now. And that's one reason why, well, not one reason, that is the reason why this channel got started to begin with is to, uh, to be a resource and to be a supplement. So on the one hand, you know, we just talked about some bad teachers. Um, we, we need good history out there. Um, and I hope that doesn't sound arrogant. I do my best. Uh, and, and hopefully it comes across all right. But uh, we, we need a good, responsible approach to history to counter the, the bad history. But, you know, we have a lot of good history teachers out there. And there's just not enough time to, to cover everything. Um, so that's my hope with the channel is that it acts as a, a little bit of a supplement to where, uh, you can learn about, you know, you can take two days and, and learn about, um, the battle of Normandy D day, you know, whatever. Um, well then you can go to this channel or a number of other channels, and then you can get that supplement. You can really start getting granular and digging in and, uh, and learning some, some new things. Okay. Uh, we'll move on from that. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. People need to think and reason. Yeah. 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 Um, just, I kind of went off on a spiel there and catching up on, on some of these comments here. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Kimberly is a history nut. I was always so upset when we didn't finish our history books. Yeah. And, and it, it's, uh, to be honest, it's so, it's so, so difficult. Um, and, and as we keep progressing, you know, further along in history, it gets even more difficult because there's more to cover. Um, you know, for example, all of this stuff that's going on in Afghanistan right now. I mean, my gosh, you could you could take that and you could get granular and dig into that for a couple of weeks and um, and really learn a lot about the, the history of you know the British being there and the Soviets being there and then uh, the Civil War there that happened where the Taliban took over and then you know for these kids that are in school right now. Like they, they have no memory of September 11th because they weren't even born yet. Okay. So we, we have approached a period in time where September 11th is history to students who are currently in school because they weren't even born yet. Uh, so, so, I mean, how, how do you cover it all? Uh, it's, it's difficult. Um, let's see. How about a trip? To Adak, Alaska, 100% going to do that at some point. So my, my grandpa was on Adak Island during World War II, uh, and, and that is absolutely going to happen. I would love to pair it with a caribou hunting trip. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, I, I just got to, uh, just like with everything, got to find the time and money to do it. Um, let's see, Chip Schaefer, you remind me of my history teacher in high school, which pushed me into trying to become an archaeologist, trying to go back to school in January, start my master's out. Oh, awesome. Good luck with that. That's awesome. My brother has, been, I've talked about him already being some archaeology stuff or more into ancient history than what I am. And he's been on some digs, uh, one in Jordan and one somewhere else on one of, on one of his trips, he was right on the Syrian border. And, um, that was whenever things were really, really bad in Syria and he could hear like rocket fire and gunfire and mortars going off and everything, um, in the distance. 
Uh, let's see. Afghanistan, total failure. Yeah, I, I know several um, several guys who served over there in Afghanistan, and they're just horrified at, at what has happened there. Um, yeah, the, the politicians completely Saigoned that one. Um, just awful. I, I, it just makes me sick thinking about what the people over there are going through right now. And it was so avoidable. Um, but yeah, let's see. Andrew Gowan. Always love the videos, brother. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Are you into Viking history? Not, I shouldn't say, I, I, I'm into all history. I find it all interesting. I've never really taken a deep dive into Viking anything though. So, so my depth of knowledge on anything Viking related is pretty shallow, uh, but I, I would love to, I would love to learn more. Um, so we'll probably take a few more minutes here and then wrap it up. We've been at it about an hour. <laughs> I've got, oh my gosh, I have so much editing that I have to do for not only this channel, but the other the other job that I have uh, in, in video production, I'm starting to kind of freak out at my workload right now. Um, but I, I need, I'm going to need like a whole case of these. And if I could go a solid week without sleep, I think I could, I think I could do all right. I think I could get caught up. Um, let's see. Battle of Warsaw and the Polish underground would be amazing. Dang, that would be cool. And I do want to get to Poland at some point. Uh, let's see. Love the U505. Any more naval history on the docket? You are really going to like some of the episodes that are coming up in the next month or two, Stephen. Uh, I, I kind of dive into some naval history. I do have to admit, though, like whenever it comes to the, the different armed services, the, the Navy, well, maybe the Air Force, too. The, the Navy is really where I'm weakest as far as my depth of knowledge. Um, so uh, especially a lot of the, the terminology and, and things like that. So whenever people see my Naval history videos, the, the guys who served in the Navy are probably going to be doing some big eye rolls uh, whenever they watch it. But hopefully people will find that stuff interesting. Uh, let's see. Karen Beal, I'm disabled and really appreciate your videos. Well, thank you. I've, I've received a lot of uh, feedback and comments of that nature of people who um, maybe don't have the uh, opportunities or capability to get out and travel for, for whatever reason. And, you know, I'm kind of the same way, you know, there are people who make videos on the other side of the world in Australia or, um, you know, in, in Europe. Uh, so just off the top of my head, uh, Sander VK, uh, his channel is uh, really good. Snafu docs. They do some excellent work. Um, Iron Mike metal detecting is another one that, that I watch quite a bit. Uh, my kids love Kara and Nate. Uh, so anyway, watching watching those uh, whenever I'm unable to get over there is is really cool. So I I, I can identify in, in some way. Yeah, I appreciate that. Will we see a video on Iwo Jima in the near future? Okay, so Iwo Jima is a dream trip for me. I, I would love to go to Iwo Jima. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of working on a plan to do some Pacific War uh, sites. I don't think that Iwo Jima is going to be one of them because it is so stinking difficult to get on that island. Um, I, to the to the best of my understanding, you have to go through like a select few tour companies. Um, and you can only go like during the anniversary. And basically, you go out there on a boat. Uh, you go on shore. They have a ceremony. They let you wander around for a couple of hours. And then you leave. As, as much as I would like to do that, that's not really well suited for this channel <laughs> and how I do things. Uh, so I, I don't even know what, what that would look like uh, to drop me off at Iwo Jima and say, okay, we're going to have a ceremony and then you have an hour. Might be able to do something, but 
like I want to spend the night on Iwo Jima. Uh, I want to I want to really really get into it. So so I don't know. I don't know what will happen there. Um, let's see. Hitler's Eagle's Nest and Birch's Garden is a trip I'm planning. Hopefully soon. The virus allows you in. I would love to to go there. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been to Birch's Garden, but I went in March and the Eagle's Nest was closed down. So I got to like stand there at the base of the mountain and and look at the eagle's nest, you know, in this cloud of fog and and sit there and and just like cry because I couldn't go up. Uh, but it was an amazing place and I definitely want to go back. Um let's see. Would love more revolutionary war. Yeah, that's that's definitely on the list. Uh, Michael Laverty, are you a veteran yourself? Uh, I am not. Um I, I get that that question quite a bit. Um, and a lot of people saying that they're shocked whenever they find out that I'm, that I'm not, uh, so I don't know, maybe I, I just give off that vibe or something. Um, but yeah, the Lord had a, had a different plan for me. Um, okay. Stephen Helms. Thanks for the super chat. Please continue your great work. You're at the top of my YouTube list. Thanks for keeping history alive. Thank you. Oh, here's that stinking fly again. Oh. oh, this thing is driving me nuts. Okay. Um, hope you win the lottery and become the Ken Burns of YouTube. <laughs> I actually reached out to Ken Burns to see if he wanted to be in one of my videos and he was too busy. He probably looked at my videos and was like, mm, not wasting my time with this redneck. Um, hello from Arizona. Yeah, I want to get to Arizona there at some point. Uh, the machine radio show. I have people. I may ask them see if I can help you out with Iwo Jima. Please, I would. I would welcome that. I would love to go to Iwo Jima. I've even thought about like trying to. Uh, well, no, I won't say this. I was getting ready to say I've thought about trying to sneak on Iwo Jima. You know, could I hire somebody to take me there by boat? Uh, but I'm not going to do that because. That would probably get me arrested and get me on the news. That would be great for the the YouTube views. I imagine if I were on the news for sneaking on Iwo Jima, a lot of people would start watching my channel to see <laughs> what's up with this idiot who tried to sneak onto the island. Um, let's see. Contact Marty about Iwo Jima. An overnight can maybe happen. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe this Iwo Jima thing can happen. I don't know. That would be awesome. Um, let's see. Father was born near the Wolf Slayer in East Prussia. I would love to go there. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, and somebody saying that Joe Galloway passed away. I, I saw that this morning. Uh, man, so, so sad. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Joe, Joe Galloway was a journalist. And uh, if you've ever seen the the movie or read the book, uh, we were soldiers. He was he was on the ground there and witnessed everything that, that happened um, there in the the Iodrang Valley. Um, yeah, not a good idea. It happened once, didn't end well. Eugene is considered hell ground. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to try it. Not worth it. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Thank you for your dedication to keeping our history alive and for sharing your Christian faith. God bless you and your family. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, when did Galloway pass? I think it was in, within the past couple of days he, he passed away. Uh, Rhonda Maggie. I've never heard your name. Um, uh, JD. Yeah. My name's JD. Um, Okay. Well, I think we are going to go ahead and uh, and wrap things up. Uh, thank you all for for jumping in and chatting with me a little bit. Uh, the The last of the Gettysburg videos will be up at nine o'clock Central tomorrow morning. Um, really appreciate you all more than you know. If you get a chance to to share the videos. Um, that's that's always appreciated as well. Hey, we're, we're trying to close the history education gap where we can. Um, and uh, you all doing this 
uh, you know, supporting the channel definitely uh, goes a long way. If you want to support the channel, uh, you can go to the History Underground Store. Dot com. You can get yourself one of these fine t-shirts made in the USA, free shipping. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and other ways that you can support the channel, there's a Patreon link is on the, the channel. Um, and then also supporting the Gettysburg Museum of History, either through a donation to their 501c3 or through purchasing some of the, the cool stuff that they have on their website. Uh, let's see. And, and one last one here, 42nd BMW SAC. You're a brave man. Thanks for answering all the comments. Keep up the great work. Hey, thank you for the super chat and thank you for the support. Uh, you all are awesome. It's, it's cool to be a part of this community that is into history. It gives me, gives me a lot of hope. Um, so anyway, uh, somebody asking me where I'm heading next. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I think the next stop is going to start with an N and end with an Ormandy. That's what I'm working on anyway. Uh, but there'll be several other videos that I filmed, you know, over the summer that uh, that will keep us, uh, hopefully keep us uh, satisfied in, until then. But anyway, uh, appreciate you all and have a good weekend.